Good evening, my friends. This is Paul, and welcome to my list of the top 10 worst games of 2019 that I have reviewed. A lot of these games are shocking merely because they exist at all. Like, a lot of them are Wii and Wii U titles when those systems are both long overdue. Now, keep in mind that these are games that I reviewed, so if there's a worse game out there that I haven't reviewed, please let me know, and I'd love to get a good laugh. With that, I hope you enjoy this, and stay tuned for my top 10 best games that I reviewed in 2019, which will be way more epic than this. Without further ado, let's go! Number 10 is Fitness Boxing for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I didn't exactly think this was bad, per se. It's just disappointing as a video game, and that's why it's so high up on this list, is because I feel like, as a game, it's... Eh to be desired, but it works as a workout tool. However, there's so many other better options that I can't really see the point of justifying this unless you really, really want that eye candy. The customization options are basically just unlocking more clothes and more songs. Most of the songs are for a demographic far younger than me. And overall, it feels like it's basically just there to give you something cool to look at and to make you sweat, and that's about it. And that's not the kind of game I really like. This one's a pretty controversial opinion, but my number nine worst game that I've reviewed in 2019 has to go to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch. I found that this game was thoroughly underwhelming. It's number nine on the list because I feel like the creators did an okay job remaking this if you already liked it, but the thing is, I did not have nostalgia for Link's Awakening, and if anything, it kind of turned me off more. I found that besides the wonderful graphics and music, the dungeon design was so boring and poor, and the game felt slow and sluggish, and overall just trapped in 1993 when it's a 2019 release. In addition to that, there's just not enough new content to justify a brand new playthrough of the game when you've already played the Game Boy version to death. At number 8, we have Just Dance 2020 for the Wii? Yeah, that's right. They made a Wii game in 2019. And all you do is wave the Wii remote to the rhythm of whoever's dancing on the screen. Whoopee. Now, it could be because I am not the target demographic in the slightest. This is way more geared towards teenagers and younger. So they might think that this is okay, but this is definitely not the version to get. There's one on the Nintendo Switch that has way more features and is in HD. And I presume that the Joy-Cons have way better motion sensing capabilities than the Wii Remote. So, if you just want to dance, this could be serviceable, but don't expect me to be so generous with the rest of the games on this list, because we're starting to get into some really boring and downright unplayable territory. At number 7, we have Will A Wonderful World for the Nintendo Switch. While I did enjoy the ending, as well as the dynamic between the two main characters, I didn't enjoy the rest of the game, which made me think that maybe I should have just looked it up on the internet instead of persevering through this mess. Overall, the game functions okay, but it's so depressing and frustrating because you don't have enough images to be able to get a picture of what's going on in the scenario. And there's also so much pessimism. Like, these characters are put into absolutely terrifying situations and a lot of them are so gruesome that if I was getting paid for my YouTube channel, I'd be demonetized in a second for showing most of them. Overall, this is one of the few instances where the destination outweighs the journey, and that's just not cool. Uh, don't even bother looking up a walkthrough to this unless you really want to get further into depression or anxiety. Number six, we have Drowning. <laughs> My best friend would probably be laughing so hard if he saw this, because this game is so bad that it's become a meme among the two of us. Like, how the heck does something like this even exist? The only people I could see benefiting from this are people that are really, really, really deep in depression. But even then, it doesn't make sense why this had to be a game. This could have easily just been someone doing a blog post or writing a, a story on a fanfiction site. 
Instead, you walk really slow through these super saturated, low resolution environments and just listen to a guy complain the whole time. There's a couple of endings, but none of them are particularly exciting because you feel so impersonal and like there's nothing to do. All you do is just hold the stick forward and hope that the game eventually shuts up. Like I said, I applaud what the creator's trying to do. I just wish he didn't have to do it in a video game. But for the rest of the games on this list, I'm starting to wish that the concepts didn't even exist. And oh boy, have we got some bad stuff. Number five is Wonder Boy Returns Remix for the Nintendo Switch. This was a game that was so notoriously bad that my sister was actually laughing while I was playing it and even wanted to review it with me because I thought that her snarky sense of humor would actually be fun for the audience to listen to. However, I'm pretty sure she wants to forget this as the game itself seems to want you to forget it as well. All it really is is an auto runner with extremely imprecise controls where you have to hold down the left stick to the left in order to stop moving. It almost feels like this game is Nintendo Switch Joy-Con drifting the game, and we all know how fun that is to play. Well, at the very least, at least repairing Joy-Con drift is free, so hopefully anyone that buys this is able to get a sufficient receipt from Nintendo. Number four is Scoop, Around the World in 80 Spaces for the Wii U, although it really should have been for the Wii if they were going to release Just Dance 2020 for the Wii, and this game primarily uses Wii remotes and multiplayer, and it looks ugly enough to be a Wii game too. This is basically just Trivial Pursuit, but spread around a giant world map to make it feel more grand than it really is. While the music is pretty cool on the menu, then the music just stops once you play the game, and... That's going to be a theme going forward, so brace yourself. Overall, just buy Trivial Pursuit. You don't need to waste your money on this filth. Number three is Space Intervention for the Wii U. You'd think a Space Invaders clone coming this late in the Wii U's life, if you can call it that, would be fantastic because they'd take advantage of the HD, maybe add a story mode. But if anything, this is more of a mockery of the original Space Invaders, with not nearly as much depth and being even worse than Galaga on the NES in the 80s. Overall, this just feels like an epic waste of time, and I presume random spin is behind this, so guys, please don't give them any more ideas. They just need to shut up. Speaking of which... Well, congratulations, random spin. You have now taken up three of the games on this list, and I haven't even finished, so guess what? You should get a game award for being the most consistently bad Wii U developers after the Wii U has already been dead. Mountain Peak Battle Mess is about as bad as the name suggests. While it could be a decent fighter if maybe this concept was fleshed out, what you see is what you get. And you can't even play the game on the gamepad alone, because you need the gamepad to increase your statistics. Both no real stakes, with no level ups, no gimmicks. There's not really even a point. In fact, you can even beat most of this game by just standing in place and mashing buttons. So, yet another pointless waste of the Wii U's time. Let's just hope in 2020 the Wii U is, like, dead and buried, and the only thing we see out of it is people downloading Shovel Knight for the new King of Cards expansion. And at number one, we have Azure Snake for the Wii U. I mean, it's embarrassing enough that this was released on the Wii U in 2019, but even worse is that the game doesn't even feel like it was finished. Now, granted, the footage you're seeing is from Rainbow Snake, which is the previous version of it that came out in 2018, because for some odd reason I didn't have footage of Azure Snake, but there's not too much difference. Just imagine this, but with more color and actual sound. And that's really all you get. Oh, and not only that, but Azure Snake actually lets you phase through your snake. Which defeats the whole point of playing a snake game. So why not just get it for free on the PC? I don't get random spin. I feel like their games are the kinds of games that you would test when you're learning how to make video games. But the thing is, they're already a company and they're releasing these as full products. What? Did they spend like two seconds making this? I bet even I could make a better game than this, and I don't even know how to draw when I have a pencil and paper. <sighs> Here's hoping Random Spin will uh, maybe spend more time making their games instead of just rushing them out so that they can squeeze every last ounce of money out of the Wii U. <sighs> With that, thank you very much for watching. The next list will be way more positive. 
I'd love to hear your thoughts on what are the worst games that you experienced in 2019. So let me know in the comment section, especially if there's an obscure Wii U or Wii dud that I missed. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and don't play as bad games as I do. Bye.